Hello everybody, I am the Bay Jose, and this is a circuit simulator that I have been creating. Uh, so today is my first day working on this circuit simulator, and uh, I'm going to document my progress creating this uh, application throughout the development of this application. Uh, so to start off, this is the background. Uh, this is kind of the workspace that you build all of your circuits on and you can use the arrow keys WASD to move the screen around. Uh, the background is not move with the uh, kind of orientation that you're at but I can fix that shortly. Uh, so it is the, this, the workspace is infinite right now so um, I'll just select an object up here and place it down in the world so you you can place objects in the world uh, they don't have to necessarily be on this background though so if I move over here I can also place objects way out here it's just they're out there and uh, you can't really see them on the background because the background did not move so I'll start out introducing my objects so this here is a toggle button which is an input for power into the system uh, this here is a wire connection point um, which is basically just a spot that wire can connect to and uh, next I have my wire so wire uh, requires two objects in order to work so I'm gonna click here this is my first object and I'm gonna click on this wire connection point and that's my second object so as you can see by this black line drawn here there's wire connecting this button to this wire connection point uh, now this is a toggle button so normally when you right click you place down the object that you have selected however um, if you press right click on an object itself it detects that it's an object and not just some empty space out in the world and it runs that object's right click event instead of just adding another button on top of this button so uh, just right click, turn it on, turn it off. This is a toggle button, so toggle it on, toggle it off. And when you toggle it on, the wire turns red, carries power to this object here, which is a wire connection point. And this also lights up red, so you can tell that it is powered. Um, so next, what I added is an inverter. So what this does is it just inverts whatever signal you have going into it. So I'll connect this all up here. Um, I don't have any power going into it, but it does output power. However, if I input power to it, it does not output power. So it just flips it. This is very much like a redstone torch in Minecraft. Uh, next, I started to add some logic to my game. I have uh, an AND gate. Um, and what this does is it requires two inputs in order to output. So if output 1 is on and output 2 or imp sorry if input 1 is on and input 2 is on it will output power uh, so that works input output uh, however if if either of these are not powered it does not output power they both have to be on which is why it's and which is why this is an and gate sorry um, let me start. This is an AND gate because it requires this AND this to be powered in order to output power. So if they're both on, it outputs power. Um, next I added an RS NOR latch, which is basically memory. It will remember its state. So if it is powered at any point, this is the input it will output power. So this can stay on, this can go off, it doesn't matter. If it was ever on, the output is on. And this is the reset. So hit that and that resets it. Um, next I added a delay type circuit, which is just like a redstone repeater in Minecraft. Um, so what this does is it just delays the time it takes the power to travel through the circuit. Um, this one here also has a right click event when you right click on it the little delay gets longer so it increases by fourths of a second so this is one fourth of a second half a second three quarters of a second and a full second of delay 
if you right click on the button it takes a second in order for the power to keep going and power that light over there um, what I added next is something that is not in Minecraft at all which is a uh, seven segment display you can make these in Minecraft but it takes lots of circuitry and redstone and stuff so uh, I'll just program this up real quick so that it uh, displays a one when I power this button so this would be a one so when this is powered, uh, instead of being this gray color, these uh, lights light up green, which is great. It can uh, be a very good visual indicator, and uh, I can make you know, binary stuff and output into digital and do math and all kinds of stuff just in this application. Um, and the last thing that I added today is an OR gate, which is not required at all anymore. It's completely useless. I might even remove it from the game, and I'll show you and explain why. Um, so, before, when when I did implement this OR gate into the game, uh, I implemented it because my wire connection points were bugged out. Before, these wire connection points would detect that there are two wires going into them, but it would only respond to input from the last connection made to it. So right now as you can see it responds to either input whereas before if I powered this this would not be powered because it was only listening to this last wire connection point. But it does work now so this is essentially an OR gate and it does do the exact same thing that this OR gate does except uh, this is a lot more compact. Um, this uses three objects this is just one object. So either of these are on, outputs on, if both of them are off, outputs off. So it's an OR gate. Um, now over here this is the move tool. Um, I don't have this working you know, perfectly well right now. Um, yeah, it's, it just doesn't seem to be working at all. Oh wait, there it is. It's, sorry, it's on the trash. Uh, it does work. So if you click on the trash, I just have these two icons switched, uh, you can move objects around. So if I click on the trash and I want to go move an object, um, it kind of split up there, but this does actually, these two things are still registered to one another. It's just, that's a bug. I have to fix that. But today is only the first day. I'll have time to change all this stuff later. Um, also, this would bug this out. <laughs> So I can actually uh, move the seven segment display around. I hope, maybe, yes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not registered to the whole block. It's just this top corner. There we go. So I can I can move the seven segment display around, and uh, it still is registered to all these different points over here. It's just, yeah, <laughs> just it doesn't update. Um. So I have these two things switched. This trash can does not actually do anything yet, but I can uh, switch it around later. Uh, and then these two are my save and load, and I will show you those right now. So this, when I click it, it saves all of this to a text file, and then load loads it from the text file. And you may have seen some stuff jumped around right there. When I load it, it does reset these uh, correctly. So if I take the move tool and I move something around and I save it and I load it, it will uh, re-update and it will fix itself, which is good. I just need to get it to do that automatically on the move instead of on the you know save and reload. So um, I'm going to break the video here and I'm going to go show you the save file that is created for this. So we'll be right back. Okay, it doesn't look like uh, Fraps is going to record uh, Notepad, so I'll just uh, end the video here today. Um, yeah, so this is actually a, a new version of the game. I launched the game again, and it did successfully load from the save file. You can tell by uh, everything being in the same place that it was. So it correctly uh, saved and loaded from a text file. Um, I'll switch over, try to figure out how to get it to record the text file, or maybe I'll just post the text file in the description so you can see all this code uh, that I saved to a text file to generate this. And um, I can tell you the text file is pretty small. I think it's only around 450 bytes for all of this to be saved correctly, which I think is pretty good.